ever wondered what links the story of Adam and Eve to our planet's magnetic poles? This might seem like an unusual question, but the connection is more profound than you might imagine. Let's start at the beginning. In the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we find the story of Adam and Eve. According to this ancient text, Adam, the first man, was created from the dust of the earth, while Eve, the first woman, was formed from one of Adam's ribs. They lived in the Garden of Eden, a paradise where they had everything they could ever need. However, after disobeying God's command not to eat from the tree of knowledge, they were cast out from Eden, marking the beginning of human life as we know it. Now, let's take a leap from the biblical to the scientific. Our planet is surrounded by a magnetic field, generated by the movement of molten iron within its outer core. This geomagnetic field has north and south poles, which are not static but wander and occasionally even swap places in an event known as a geomagnetic reversal. These poles are essential for life as we know it, protecting us from harmful solar radiation. So, what do Adam and Eve have in common with the Earth's magnetic poles? At first glance, not much. One is a religious narrative about the dawn of humanity, the other a scientific phenomenon crucial for the existence of life on our planet. However, both narratives deal with beginnings, transformations, and the struggle for survival. Both tell stories of creation and change, of paradise lost and life persevering, but how exactly do these two narratives intersect? How can the Genesis story shed light on our understanding of the Earth's magnetic field, and vice versa? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Stay tuned as we delve into the fascinating parallels between the Genesis and the magnetic poles. The creation story and the formation of Earth's magnetic field. Two narratives, one central theme. Let's dive in. The book of Genesis recounts the first three days of creation, Day one saw the birth of light, separating it from the darkness. This event parallels the birth of Earth's magnetic field. Just as light emerged, our planet's magnetic field sprang to life, creating a division, a polarity, not of light and darkness, but of magnetic forces. This magnetic field, invisible to the naked eye, is a protective shield. It guards our planet against harmful solar winds that could strip away our atmosphere much like the way light provides warmth and sustenance, warding off the cold and lifeless dark. On the second day of creation, the heavens were made, a firmament to separate the waters above from the waters below. This mirrors the role of the magnetic field in creating a boundary between Earth and the harshness of space. The field extends thousands of miles into space, its invisible lines of force creating a celestial barrier, separating us from the cosmic waters beyond. The third day brought about the separation of water and dry land, the emergence of continents. Similarly, the magnetic field plays a crucial role in tectonic activity. The movement of molten iron within Earth's outer core generates electric currents, which in turn create the magnetic field. This activity influences the movement of tectonic plates, leading to the formation of continents and ocean basins, separating the land from the sea. So we see a fascinating parallel between the biblical creation story and the formation of Earth's geomagnetic field. Both narratives tell a story of division and protection, of creating spaces where life can flourish. As we continue to explore these parallels, we'll delve into the next phase of creation, the formation of life. But for now, let's pause and ponder on these intriguing similarities. After all, science and faith, it seems, may speak the same language, just in different dialects. Let's move on to the next phase of creation, the formation of life. Life begins in the Garden of Eden, and Earth's magnetic field experiences its first reversal. Just as life was stirring in the Garden of Eden, the Earth was experiencing its own monumental shift. The planet's magnetic field, which had been steadily establishing itself, suddenly and dramatically reversed. This was the first of many magnetic reversals to come, marking a significant chapter in the Earth's geophysical history. In the Garden of Eden, the first life forms were emerging, evolving and beginning to shape the world as we know it today. This was a time of profound transformation, a period of rapid change and growth. It was in this fertile cradle that the seeds of life were sown, and from these seeds sprouted the first humans, born of the soil and the breath of life. Simultaneously, the Earth's magnetic field was undergoing its first reversal. This event, though invisible to the naked eye, was as significant as the creation of life itself. 
The magnetic field which serves as a shield protecting Earth and its inhabitants from harmful solar radiation flipped. North became South and South became North. This change was not instantaneous, but rather took place over thousands of years. And yet, it was a change that would have profound implications for the future of the planet. These two events, the emergence of life and the first magnetic reversal, are not just parallel phenomena, but deeply intertwined. The magnetic field with its protective shield made life on Earth possible. Without it, the harmful solar radiation would have made the planet uninhabitable. And so, as life was blossoming in the Garden of Eden, the Earth's magnetic field was also finding its rhythm, flipping and reversing, but always protecting. The creation of life and the first magnetic reversal, two monumental shifts that forever changed the course of history. They signified the beginning of a new era, an era marked by change, growth, and the constant interplay between life and the forces of the Earth. The creation of humans brings us to the final phase of Genesis. Adam and Eve, the first humans, and the establishment of Earth's magnetic poles. As the story goes, Adam and Eve were the first humans to grace the Earth. They were the beginning of our species, the genesis of mankind. But what you might not know is that around the same time, another significant occurrence was taking shape deep within the Earth. Just as Adam and Eve were being formed from the dust of the ground, the Earth's magnetic poles were being established. The molten iron within the Earth's outer core, swirling and churning, started generating a magnetic field. This event, much like the creation of Adam and Eve, marked a significant turning point for our planet. Adam and Eve, in their creation, brought forth the possibility of human life. They were the first, the pioneers, the ones who started it all. Similarly, the establishment of the magnetic poles laid the foundation for a protective shield that would guard the planet and its budding life forms from harmful solar radiation. Drawing a parallel, both events were about beginnings, about setting the stage for what was to come. Both were about protection and preservation. Adam and Eve, through their progeny, would ensure the continuity of human life. The magnetic poles, on the other hand, would safeguard the Earth maintaining conditions suitable for life to flourish. And just as Adam and Eve had their trials and tribulations, so too did the magnetic poles. They weren't static but dynamic, shifting and even reversing over millions of years. Yet through all the changes, they remained an integral part of Earth's existence, much like the human race. So, you see, the creation of Adam and Eve and the establishment of the magnetic poles are two significant events that, although vastly different in nature, share remarkable similarities. They both serve as significant turning points, marking the beginning of new chapters in the grand cosmic story. But what happens on the seventh day, the day of rest? On the seventh day, God rested, and so did the magnetic poles. In the grand narrative of Genesis, the seventh day holds a unique place. It's a day of rest, a pause in the relentless rhythm of creation. This day, marked by an absence of creation, serves as a moment of stability within the constant flux and transformation. And interestingly enough, we see a similar pattern when we look at the Earth's magnetic poles. Just as the seventh day brought calm to the chaos of creation, periods of stability punctuate the Earth's magnetic history. These periods are known as supercrons, extended intervals when our planet's magnetic field doesn't flip. They're the seventh day of the geomagnetic calendar, if you will. Now, you might be wondering why these days of rest occur. Well, it's a question that scientists are still grappling with. The dynamo effect, driven by the Earth's rotation and the movement of molten iron within its outer core, generates our planet's magnetic field. But what causes this dynamo to occasionally take a break, resulting in a supercron, remains a mystery. Just as the significance of the seventh day extends beyond a simple day of rest in Genesis, the implications of these supercrons reach far beyond a mere pause in magnetic reversals. They have profound effects on our planet and its inhabitants. For instance, during these periods of stability, the Earth's magnetic field is stronger, offering increased protection from harmful solar radiation. But it's not just about physical protection. These periods of stability also provide a certain psychological comfort. Just as the seventh day offers a break from the relentless cycle of creation, these supercrons provide a respite from the constant flux of the Earth's magnetic field. In the end, the story of Adam and Eve and the magnetic poles reveals a narrative of creation, transformation, and stability.
It's a narrative that intertwines the spiritual and the scientific, the biblical and the geological, reminding us once again of the deep connections between all aspects of our world.